Does the bike have large talons? Hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Got another custom e-bike build for you. What do we have? Oh, giant talon. It's a giant talon right here. I'm Johnny Nerd out. If you're new to this channel, if you've never seen any of my other videos before and you just happen to, you know, the YouTube algorithm brought you here. You're like, why am I looking at e-bike videos? A second ago, I was looking at a Brazilian butt wax competition. Now I'm looking at some dude in a helmet talking about his e-bikes. All right, what the heck, go for it. This is what I do, I take bikes and I convert them into e-bikes, pretty dope ones. So I'm gonna go over what we did to this, why it's dope, and then I'm gonna do a performance test where I take this thing up a hill, I try to climb steep hills with it and I see how fast I can go with just the motor. So this is a giant Talon, it's a 29er hardtail mountain bike. It's, it's giant's, I don't know, entry level mountain bike, entry level components on it that's why but it feels good it's still it's get the brakes feel really good it's got a big frame it's got 29 by 2.25 inch tires yeah i think they are it's got a suntour front fork it's an entry level fork it's definitely not made for single track riding or anything i took it off a hill off of a curb and it, it felt like it, the rebound was just thung. But it's, it's definitely good for commuting. It's definitely a good fork for commuting, taking off the little road vibrations. Um, it's got a seven speed cassette, which is not much. It's kind of weird that they only put a seven speed on it. And this low gear is pretty low. I think it's like a 28 tooth. It doesn't have much of a climbing gear on this. So it wasn't really able to maximize using a mid drive on this, but still way better than what a hub motor can climb, any hub motor using the same power. It has the micro shift gear shifters, so it's definitely entry level. I'm not a huge fan of the micro shift, but this one, it, it works fine. So as long as it works, it's great. I would have I would have rather had they, they started with like a Shimano at least though. Hey, it's a good bike. It's a good solid frame. So it is good. If you're just looking for like a, you know, a decent, uh, like a budget buy for a commuter, maybe a trail bike, light trail bike, or like a campground bike. This is a good, uh, hardtails are definitely the, the Swiss army knives of bicycles, especially e-bikes, because you put a rear rack on this, you put some pannier bags on this, you got a killer commuter bike. With the suspension front forks and these a little bit of aggressive tires, you now have a decent trail bike. You can go off-road if you see a trail. I mean, obviously, hardcore trails, probably not for this, but for most trails, this will be fine with. It's got mechanical disc brakes. Um, they feel fine. They feel great, confident, inspiring, whatnot. Okay, let's get into the motors and the motor electrical stuff. BBS02 motor by Bafang. Put, it's rated at 750 watts. It draws 25 amps, so depending on the battery voltage that you use, could put up up to 1300 watts at peak. And we went with a 52 volt, 16.75 amp hour battery. These are using the BAK cells. They're 33 milliamp hour battery cells and this thing has a 35 amp BMS. It's a good battery system for this motor. You're not tapping into the maximum capacity of this battery at all, which is nice. So the battery's not gonna be breathing hard when even when you're full throttling this thing. It's got a throttle here. So if you don't want to use pedal assist, which this also has, you could just use the throttle. Um, it's got a little toggle switch here. Went with the 850C display, has a USB out. Um, that's the main difference between this and a 500C. If you're looking for a nice color display upgrade over the black and white stock display, I recommend going with the 500C. But if you need a USB output, or if you want a USB output, go with this. You could charge your phone, charge your lights, charge your, your vape if you're if you're a vapor, if you're still into that. Put a gear shift sensor on it, which is right here. It's a mid-drive, so I totally recommend putting a gear shift sensor on it. it. Just acts like an automatic clutch, cuts power for a second, lets you shift gear, and then puts the power back on. All right, let's go do a Johnny Nerd Out test and see how this performs climbing hills from a standstill, from a rolling start, and then also top speed, just under motor without any human power. So you can see 34 miles an hour is not bad. Kind of was expecting a little bit faster because these have 29 inch tires. So possibly it's because there was a breeze. I don't know. Hill climbing, you can see from a standstill, it wasn't that great. It kind of struggled kind of going up. I think it's because of this granny gear is not that big. So an easy fix for that is either get a, a bigger gear back there or you could swap out the front one for a smaller one. 
and then that'll really drastically affect your your climbing. If you switch out your rear, it won't affect your top speed at all. So that's the nice thing about mid drives is you just switch out your cogs and it changes your performance crazy. And so for this build was 1100 bucks. It was like 1119 bucks for this build without labor. So if you're thinking about building this bike yourself, this, this setup was about 1100 bucks for a bike that's gonna go 34 miles an hour. With this battery, you have a range of probably 60 miles with you know, a decent amount of pedaling. If you're just doing the throttle, this battery is probably gonna get you about a 30 mile range. For 1100 bucks, try to point me in the direction of a pre-made e-bike that can do this. This bike, you know, you might be able to get this bike for like 600 bucks somewhere around there. If you buy one used, even less, maybe even 300 bucks. So you're talking 1500 bucks possibly to get a bike just like this, you know, used, but for these specs, it's insane. There's no way you're getting anything like this pre-made. Yeah, so I'm wearing my helmet for safety. I've been getting some flack for not wearing my helmet in some of my safety tests, and so I'm, I'm being over-cautious. And yes, it still counts even if it isn't strapped in. All right, later guys, thanks.